Hello and welcome back to another Uncle Tad's Creative Shack video. Today we're going to look at this set here, which is a paint by numbers set, which I picked up quite a while ago. Um, looks like I picked it up for about $8 at a place called Toy City in Keene, New Hampshire. Um, I've always been curious about these things because I'm curious about the paint quality in the pots and, you know, if they actually give you a brush and kind of curious as to how the whole thing uh, works. I've never, I don't think I've ever done one of these before. Yeah, it looks like it does give you, does give you a brush here. You get your different colors of paint. Of course, your numbers, your corresponding paint numbers for the actual sheet itself. So let's get this open and take a look at it. Okay, so I just opened this package up to see all what was inside of it. And right here we have a thin piece of paper. And I'm not sure, I mean it's very thin, but it's the same pattern um, with what appears to be the same numbers as what's on the actual um, piece that you're supposed to be painting on. So I don't know if you could maybe use this with colored pencils or something, I'm not sure. So here's the actual uh, painting to, you know, to do. It's just on a heavy cardstock, heavy white cardstock. Mine unfortunately does have a crinkle right down the sides here. So we'll have to see how that plays out as I'm painting. Maybe that doesn't even have a, maybe it doesn't get affected. Um, I'm not sure. It does have a, you know, it's just a, it's just heavy cardstock, but it is kind of bendable. It's kind of a, almost um, a little bit thicker than a uh, t-shirt box, but uh, yeah, that's interesting. And then when you open the whole thing up, as I was pulling the pieces out, I saw there was yet another, uh, of the exact same design on the inside with the numbers that correspond to the uh, paint colors. Um, so let's take a look. Maybe it says it right here in the instructions what it comes with. So it looks like it includes one paintbrush, 10 acrylic paint pots, one pre-printed artist board, and one pre-printed, oh, practice sheet. Okay, so the practice sheet must be this one. That would be your practice sheet because it's really thin. Yeah. So that's your practice sheet. But strangely enough, I mean, they still went ahead and printed it on the inside of the package itself. Um, the exact same uh, pattern, only much larger. And then there's, of course, there's your original. Let's shake that down. There's your original right there. The paintbrush. Let's take that out. Doesn't seem to be too. Uh, let's see here. Okay. And there's the paintbrush you get. Don't say anything. Nothing uh, funky as far as the quality. It's just called Royal. Royal something. I can't even really read that. Uh, but the bristles seem to be seem to be fairly well. This might actually be a pretty good project. Let's take a look at the paints. So the paints are just in these little pots like this, and let's try to doesn't really shake up. But let's go ahead and move this out of the way and see. Yeah, there's definitely some <laughs> liquid paint in there. So. I was afraid that this stuff would be dried up. Um, often is the case is when you get something like this, it's all dried and nothing is usable. But uh, so far, so good. So what you'll have to do is, yeah, see this is kind of, oh, here we go. So you have to use the back packaging to get your numbers to correspond with the paint colors. So. My guessing is what I'll probably end up doing, let's see, well, if I cut that out, I'll cut out the back, I don't want to do that. You'll have to just line them up on the uh, package itself, or at least off to the side so you can see the number. 
Um, I guess that's about 20. Uh, number one is our white. We have tan. We have a yellow. Brown. Looks like a violet. Nah. Okay. So, that's about what it looks like. This is the whole set. Comes with your your brush. So, I'm going to go ahead and start working on this and let's see how it comes out. So, upon closer inspection of this and reading the directions that it came with, um, you'll see that there are two numbers in some spots and one number in others. Uh, for instance, right here, you'll see just a number 7 and right here, you'll see a number 7 and 10. The 7 and 10 means you have to mix uh, color 7 with a little bit of color 10 to achieve a secondary color. Um, and that's actually throughout this whole thing. Um, so what I wanted to do was start by concentrating on just an area that only uh, wants a single color, number 7, in this area here. And this will actually represent a um, uh, some bushes off to the side. So I'm going to start right there and see how this paint works. They say you can thin it out with a little bit of water too if you need to to help it come off the brush better. So I'm going to go ahead and use my paint pot. I'm going to put a little bit of water. There we go. A little bit of water in a water bottle cap and I guess what I'll do is I'm gonna wet the water the paintbrush first just a little bit and I also have a paper towel right here uh, off to the side I'll slide this over a little bit okay so the brush is a little bit wet I'm gonna try to see what this paint what this paint does what it looks like so number seven is all in here It seems to be flowing or uh, sticking pretty well too. Another thing I worry about with these sets is that the paint may be such a cheap quality that it doesn't work very well, but it seems to be doing okay. See if you can see that at all. Yeah, so it seems it does paint. These are just water-based paints, anyways. I'm sure you could. Maybe I'll paint it like this. I'm sure you could find similar paint colors, you know, at Walmart or somewhere like that. Those uh, craft lines, like plaid or, or whatever the other colors are. are um, companies are usually they're about 50 cents a, a bottle and you could probably just color match you know take a little bit of the pot take a you know the pot with you to the store and um, color match what they have Okay. Yep, so that's how it's coming.
So as you can see, this is definitely a project that you want to do with, you know, maybe a movie or a TV show on in the background or some music or something. It takes a lot of time because you want to stay in the lines. Um, so you don't just, uh, whereas other types of painting where you can just, you know, slap on some dark green, slap on some light green, call that a bush. Um, you could get the painting done quicker. With this one here, you, you want to stay within the lines because that's the whole point of doing the paint by number um so um what i think i'm gonna do um actually before that you see this see where they have uh let's point that out this is a bush that's on the side of the uh railroad tracks here uh they have seven three so you're gonna mix uh seven which is this color here which and some three which is yellow to create a lighter shade and that's going to go all over the top of this bush um <clears throat> now my thing is i just i don't want to run out of the paint before i start mixing some i know i would take a little bit off to the side and mix it with a little bit of yellow but i would want to see if there was any more of that same seven and three somewhere else so it all matches um you know otherwise I don't know, I'm just kind of curious. I just don't want to run out of the paint and then say, oh, well, geez, you need a whole mess of it over here. Like, if we move to the, the locomotive tender, or actually the, the boiler unit here, let's take a look if this will go down a little bit. Okay. So, oh, actually, right over here, right by the window. That is seven, which is the color I just used. And it goes all the way up into there. So that's straight without mixing. This here... Um, is also number seven so that's all in here around the the letters and up in the top so there's a lot of untouched or unmixed color just straight number seven uh, there there and then coming up over here onto the boiler on the top of the boiler that's also straight seven all the way down along with this um, some patches down here that's straight seven so um, that's what I'm talking about. So I think what I'm going to do is, just for me and how I operate, I'm probably going to want to hit uh, all the areas that are the same color as this one, just to ensure I have uh, enough paint. And then come back and mix the two colors, the uh, number three and the number seven together to make that lighter shade for the top of the bush there. So, uh, and I'll go ahead and show you the picture again so you can see what I'm talking about okay so here's where we're working on here with the bush we just kind of put in all this uh, medium shade green here into the project see if you can see that so that's all that that shade of green uh, hold on yeah right over here uh, but then they're wanting you to mix it with a little bit of yellow to create these highlights. And then they want to mix, want you to mix it with a little bit of black to create the darker shading right in here. So that's, you know, uh, so that's why what I want to do is I want to take the same number seven here and put it here, 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 all along the locomotive as well as probably up here on these trees up here and down here before I decide to mix some yellow in with it um, that's how I operate I mean I suppose you could take out a little a little glob of the paint put it put it in another container mix that with a little bit of yellow and call that done but um, I, want, I just want to make sure I have enough of the right color for the project before I do that so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and work on
Okay, and this is pretty much all the green uh, for number seven. So we got some in the engine here and the back part of the, uh, or the tender in the back. Some more grass up here, some grass right here, some bushes, some more grass. So any other number seven that you'll see on here is usually mixed with a color. Like this one here, it's got 710. I think that's how it is. Let's see, up here. Try to get, not get in the light. 710. So that's where you have to mix a little bit of color 10 and a little bit of 7. Right here. Let's see if you can see that. We have 710, 710. And I believe. Yeah, all in here. Let's see. I know it looks kind of confusing right now, but. 710 here, 710 here, this is some bushes, so again if we take a look at the, uh, what it's supposed to look like, so you can see here your 7 is this medium green, let me try to get, zoom it in, there we go, so the 710 is where my finger's at, that's right there, the color we just painted was that, so we did all that, down here. 10 itself is black and then 710 is a combination of this color and black to make the darker shade. Okay so we got to be careful to make not too much black but just enough to darken up that green. And then over here is uh, where are we? Right here is the bushes right there. So that's right there. And then we have the kids standing on the fence. So there's the girl there. There's a boy there. So we get a little bit of green uh, in between them. So that's it. That is so far uh, number, se uh, number seven with the green. I actually like this set. This is really cool. It's uh, It does take time. I will I will say that. It takes time and that's... The whole point of it, it's a hobby, you know, it's something you do to uh, to pass the time. Uh, you don't want to get done right away. But uh, eh, it, some people may, may feel it, it's a little bit tedious because there's a lot of intricacy. You know, you want to get the paint only in the certain areas where it's supposed to be. So some people may not have the patience for that. And I can understand that. You know, someone like myself, I kind of want to be a perfectionist at times. Um... You know, I've, I've wanted to go over some of these spots a couple times to get the paint in there solidly. Um, other places you can see might need to get touched up a little later on. So, yeah, I could see where it would be tedious for some people. But, again, it's a hobby, so that's why we do it. So, I'm going to go ahead and continue working on this, and I'll we'll move on to the next step. So... The next step is to mix up some of the number 7 green with some of the number 10 black to make a darker shade of green, the shadow green. So they don't tell you a mixed concentration or anything like that. They're just telling you to go ahead and mix to make that shade. So what I've got here, which uh, I love these things, it's just a regular cap from a water bottle. Um, I always buy the big package of water bottles at uh, Walmart. It's like four bucks for like 30 of them or whatever. And I save them for uh, projects like this. This is just a coffee stir. So what I'm going to do is see if I can't get enough paint out of here to mix up that shade that they want us to use. And actually, I'm going to use... Oh, I can use this one. And it's going to be just a kind of go by eye. See if it looks good. Don't... Eh. Yeah, I guess we do need quite. I guess we do need a bit of it, but it does. It does. Um. It does last a bit too, so we don't want to get too much on here. If you can see what I'm doing, I'm just gonna put in. Yeah, and the black won't stay up for some reason. So there's green. There's our green. Uh, 
And we'll take a little bit of black. Get the brush off to the side. Yeah, these bottles, you need, might need to put them in something to keep them more upright. Okay. Now, see, I didn't add much black, but all of a sudden it got, it got dark in a hurry. So. See, that's, uh, that's definitely a dark green, but we might need a little bit more than that, so I'm going to go ahead and try to. Uh, scoops them out just like that. Maybe that's even better probably than the coffee stir. It's okay because there's quite a bit of this to be used on the project itself. Yeah, we'll take even some more off of here. Get it all off the lid. That'll be good. So yeah, it really doesn't take too much of that black to to darken up this green. The colors are going to be a little bit different from the cover of the box anyway, so you just have to kind of go by that. The cover of this box here is a, is printed, and of course the paints you're using are paints, so it's a completely different medium. If you can see that at all. So all we've done is we've just darkened up. Yeah. We've darkened up that to that. If you can see that. There we go. So we just added some black to this to make it a little bit darker. And that will now represent um, the shaded parts of this project. And so here we have it. We're... <clears throat> We got some uh, custom dark green in there that the directions have you mix. We've got uh, a custom yellow green. You can see there, some there, tops of the bushes there. And um, I save it. So I'll come back to this a little bit later on. I'm going to be done with this for today, but I save it by putting it into a sandwich Ziploc bag. It's just in one of these uh, water bottle caps. And that way, if I need to go back and put a second coat here and there, I have a little bit of the same color touch up. Otherwise, you know, you could custom mix it again, um, but it's just easier if you can save it. It uh, makes more sense. So again, as you can see, that's what we're making. And you can see it coming through right here. That's the whole locomotive and again the bushes. And also put in the number 447 on the front in yellow. When I had the yellow out to do the uh, tender letters. And yeah, so there we go. We're going to put this aside for today. And we will come back in a probably a... A uh, part two, uh, maybe tomorrow. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.